Station, everyone. Happy new comic book day. Happy Whiplash Wednesday with the PCP Army Bad Batch. We're at it for another freaking week, and we're just going to continue to continue to continue to bring you amazing content. Guys, Whiplash Wednesday started over on Nick Comic Culture's uh, Cadets, Toys, and Comics. I want to make sure I got that right because I always screw it up. But yeah, Cadets, Toys, and Comics video. Look at what they have in their shop, what they have for New Comic Book Day, and all the toys and goodies they have hiding in the background. Guys, it's always a great time over there. Check out what they have. Who knows? You may find something that you may want to pick up. Go check it out, guys. And I'll get to the rest after this video because we're at Chatting with the Comic Community, episode 34. And today's guest is a Spine Tick alum. Like, he is part of the Spine Ticks every freaking Saturday. They moved over to Comic Talk Weekly because congratulations, Sith and Lady Sith, because they just tied the knot not too long ago. So congratulations to them. But this guy is dropping a lot of content on reviews. And just like he'll read a book and then he'll drop a content and they're so informational. You guys go check him out. The link is down below. But let's find out a little bit about him. Let's find out a little bit about Evil Mike. Station, Station, man. Station, Trav. How's it going? It's going good yourself. Yeah. Another day, another day, right? Yeah. So I'm so glad that you're joining me today. Thanks for taking the time out of your busy day to join me and talk a little bit about the nerdy side of you. <laughs> I'm honored, man. I mean, this is a big honor, man, chatting with the community. I mean, come on, man. Um, I mean, you had some big names on here, you know, Sheena was on here. Yeah. My brother Roscoe, you know, you've had some, some, some entertaining people. So, I mean, I'm glad to be a part of it now. I'm glad you, that you're part of it as well, man. So to the viewers that don't know a lot about you, tell them a little bit about yourself. Hi, I, I am evil Mike and, um, I'm, um, this, uh, you know, my channel is evil comics and, um, I pretty much do uh, reviews. I read a lot, um, and that's kind of what, like, the idea behind my channel is. I have many reasons behind it, but the main reason is um, I read a lot, and then I review it uh, to give you, you know, maybe a grander scale. Maybe you've read the comic and you want to, you know, hear somebody's thoughts about it, or maybe you're iffy about the issue and, you know, you weren't going to pick it up, but maybe based on my art or you know, my little bit of storytelling, you know, you might uh, be more inclined to pick it up or pass it, you know, because sometimes there are some, some sketchy reads out there, you know, but that's kind of what my channel is about. I pretty much do reviews every now and then I'll do hauls and pick up videos and unboxings, but pretty much reviews. That's awesome, man. So let's get right into it, man. How did you start your journey into uh, reading comics? Um... I started early, you know, I've been reading, you know, when most people, they say they got in it, you know, during our current, current, you know, situation, me, it's, it's the opposite. I've been reading comics my whole life. I started in, back in 1984. I, I can remember the, uh, the first comic, uh, like the first two, one of them's real sketchy. I know it was a Spider-Man issue. I just haven't tracked down which uh, specific issue it was, but the other one was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles issue number four the adventure series. Um, and around that time, it was, it was my parents, and they'd give me the comics. And back then, you know, then everything was like 75 cents a dollar. They went into a gas station, picked up a stack. We were going on a road trip, and they were just like, hey, you know, keep busy. And back then, we, I mean, this before, like, Game Boys. And, you know, I mean, we didn't have anything that, you know, it was either, like, playing, a, what was that game? You know, a, you know guess, guess what I'm pointing at kind of thing. And uh, my parents decided to, like, give me comics. So I, I started back then. I think I started reading comics, like, before even reading. I was just looking at the pictures and stuff. Um, I, I might have been on, like, a, you know, where I could pick out certain words or something. But at that time, I was kind of making up my own stories and just going with the art. And then as the years progressed, you know, I want to say eight is – is really around the time I was reading like novels and stuff like that. But that's really when I can say I was like, it took a, you know, when I became a comic book collector at that time, it was really when I, you know, around eight, I started 
you know, maybe bagging and boarding and getting into different series and stuff like that. Uh, it's funny how you say it. it's like you, you remember the pictures and that. That's how I got into Shadowhawk. Like I wasn't reading it. I was I was making up my own stories while I was looking at the pictures. Um, so what would you say like your first series that you really, really got into? Um, it's kind of like a tie. And I'd always, I don't remember exactly which one came first. I guess it depends on the publication date. And I haven't went back and looked at it. But it was either Todd McFarlane's Spider-Man run or it was either you know, um, X-Men, the blue and gold, the reboot, or it was just that, that story that led right up before, um, Batman's, uh, nightfall with, uh, Bane and everything. Um, so it was kind of like, a, I mean, it was, it was cause I was really, you know, I mean, it's like right now I, I read like so many different consecutive series ongoing and it was kind of like that back then. I can't say it was one specific, but I know those three, like in general, like I, I was attached to and I was hooked. I mean, <clears throat> I don't think I, you know, I mean, specifically like Spider-Man, X-Men, and I, I I stuck with them for a long time, you know, 50 issues past kind of thing. That's how devoted to the story I was. Now, did you just stick with uh, the superhero stuff back then, or did you also, like, dive into the indie type of stuff back in the early indies? That's where it gets a little bit weird, because um, indies for me are kind of new. Now, it depends on what you say by indies, because I was there day one picking up Spawn when it first released, and I remember Pitt and the Max. I was more on that side of Image. I didn't really go, like, you know, Gen 13 and uh, Profit and, and that side of it. But, um, I, I mean, really, even back then, I still kind of saw, because even though... I went that way. I still went like Savage Dragon, Spawn, Max, Pit, that kind of thing. It was still superhero-y, you know, so I did. I still didn't see it as independent. Um, kind of for me recently, indie reads have been recent. And as I was growing up, there was this myth that it was like, and I don't know if it was marketing or just friends, because I haven't had a whole lot of other comic book friends my whole life. I think that's a lot of our similar issues. Um, but... Um, now there was just this like weird taboo when it came to indies growing up. It was like, you stay away, you know, nothing good can be found in those, you know, kind of thing. And so I really didn't get that. That's what's new for me currently in this situation is, you know, coming across because I've been watching comic book YouTube since, you know, comic books hit YouTube because I was a comic book fan. So, but like it's recently with this indie buzz and everything that kind of got me into and, and, I know a lot of this is a lot of people's answer and I'm like half, half, half with the series, but something is killing the children is what really got me to explore indies. And it wasn't just that series because I've read it all the way through. And I, like I said, I'm half, half, I like it, but I don't love it or hate it. To me, it's, it's great. It's good. Um, but to me, it's, it's not new. And I get the appeal for a lot of new readers. Ooh, that's, that's new and exciting. And, and I, I get it. It's it's there. It's got great art. It's got a great story. I love the writer. I mean, he reads a lot. He writes a lot of the other stuff I do read. Um, but um, I want to say Indies is brand new. Yeah, I kind of branched out and I was like, look, I like these things. Let's try a bunch of horror. Let's try. And I didn't stick to one company. I, I was kind of like, I mean, I, I kind of went for as indie as I could find kind of thing. So you didn't jump, but like, I, I think... Uh... The Walking Dead came out in 2003, so you mm -hmm. didn't jump on the hype train for that either? And then that's the other thing, like, see, some of these, I don't know if I consider them indie reads, because, like, that's, like, Invincible, and, but I guess when they first started, they were, but that's, like, The Walking Dead. My story is probably, like, a lot of others, where, like, I didn't know about that series until the show came out, the pilot of that show came out, and I was already, like, a horror fan, I love J, you know, um, Romero was attached to like the first episode. He was like the executive director and producer behind that episode. So I was like, yes, you know, anything with him and zombies. But a lot of the preview got me into it. And a lot of it was like catfish. And because it was like that scene with like Rick on the horse, I was like, oh yeah, I need that in my life. You know, <laughs> you know, he, he's, he's riding around on a horse killing zombies. And it all, you know, we, we know how it played out. It didn't play out that long. <laughs> um, but still it was kind of like, ooh, that, that, you know, um, so, 
after watching that original episode, I ran to the comic book shop and I was like, bro, I was like, what's this Walking Dead? They said it was a comic. I was like, I've never heard about it. And in that time, I'd been in the comic book shop. I'd just mainly been picking up like Marvel and DC. And they were like, oh, it's this, it's an image title. And so I went and saw it. And I mean, even at that time, I think, I think the number one issue was already going for like seven or $800. It was already like, I, it was already way out of my price scale. And then, I mean, I have gone back and read The Walking Dead, but I, I did it through the, the commendiums that they came out with, like, you know, the first 40 issues here and the next 40 issues or whatever it was. And I've read, I think, I want to say up to Alpha, up until that part when they started that that whole arc with that. But I've read, like, everything before then. But, I mean, it's a great read, but, uh, but I'm, okay, that's a specific series that I haven't, like, tracked down any of the floppies just because – how big and how far and how expensive like anything under like 75 is, you know, because of all the different first appearances. Yeah. Uh, I loved Alpha. Alpha mm -hmm. and that, that, those, uh, what were they called? Beta. Yeah, uh, Beta, the, um, but the, yeah, like they just, you never knew who they were. Like if mm -hmm. you were like, and yeah, that, you kind of put yourself in that kind of situation and you're looking at it like, Oh, I'm going to walk through that. I'd be scared crapless because like, man, you're, you're not expecting like a zombie just to pull out a knife. It was more of a threat because as the series goes, you know, it's like first it's zombies versus people. And then as the series go, it's like people versus people versus zombies. And then it's like, now it's like this whole, we're like, now people are wearing zombie skins versus people versus, you know, and it's like, I mean, it, it's talk about a whole way complication of things you got to watch out for in this world. <laughs> um, and, but you talk spoilers, about being, guys. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, that's what three years and like, come on now. Um, no, but uh, now you talk about the inventiveness to continue that story and still add new threats. I mean, that, that's pretty, that's pretty stellar on, on their end. Yeah. And I, like, don't get me wrong, Negan was a good villain in, in the series, but, like, when it got to Alpha and Beta, it was, they stepped it up. Um, no, but going back to, like, some of the indies that have been around for a while, I mean, with without me getting into it, there's a lot that I've missed and a lot of bigger ones. But, I mean, see, that's not the indie craze that's here. I, it is a craze for me, but it's not like Indies is a new thing. Like you just brought up one, The Walking Dead, but Invincible, you know, Saga, um, and that those are just image. But then you have like some under Vertigo, like the Sandman, you know, especially recently with the Overture, you know, and they had J.H. Williams that did the art in that. And then they had like, I mean, they've had some other amazing, you know, <laughs> indie titles that popped up under the Vertigo and not just your regular like Sandman or Costine or Hellblazer. They've also had some other ones. There was this one called The Royals. It was really good. Um, and it was, I, th I think it, it was about Canadian and English uh, superheroes. It was kind of dope. Um, uh, but they, they've had uh, some other different series that have come out that have been really good. But I've, I've kind of gone backwards and, and trying to, you know, like, uh, why did I pass these up? You know, why, why didn't I read these kind of thing? And then there's been so many you know, recommendations and recently, I mean, and, and the writing just keeps going on, right? <laughs> now, I, I see you going more towards the DC sides of things. Like, with your reviews and that, I see a lot of love for DC, which, come on, like, I, I love DC as well, so... Okay, so that's that's like a good topic, but I love comics in general, and I don't have the cutoff between companies currently. Now, I love Marvel, I love Image, I love Aftershock, Vault. I don't think there's, like, this one over the other one. Now, I will say, yes, like, I love DC, and I'm a huge DC fan overall, like, animated, and DCEU, you know, CW-verse. Um, and it's not like, you know, I mean, I have to remind people this. It's not like just because I like Batman, I have a biased eye. You know, I still judge his comics just like every other, you know, every other comic and stuff like that. But no, I want to say like half my pull list is specifically DC, but it's not. You know, I mean, I, I every week I go through everything that comes out, everything that I can get my hands on. Right. So like when I'm when I'm pulling out what I'm going to read and that going on week and it could be between 
I try and keep it under 50 titles because I can do read and review within 50 titles, you know, within my given time frame. Um, so like when I'm looking at everything, it's all, you know, of course, based on my interest and things that I think are going to be good reads. And because some things I do stay away from just because I'm not interested in maybe those topics or, you know, maybe those, those type of superheroes or something like that. But I mean, when I'm going through the list, you know, I mean, I, I look at everything Marvel's dropping, everything's DC's dropping, but I mean, like, I, it might be like two or three that I might pick from Marvel. And there's some that I'm, I'm really excited for. There's been some good stories within Marvel, but I mean, to me currently, and I'm not, you know, trying to down anybody that's really loving Marvel right now. It's just a, to me, it's just, it's, it's the norm with Marvel right now. It hasn't really been amazing or spectacular or fantastic at the moment. I'm not saying it hasn't been there, because it has. So, like, what what titles are you liking from Marvel so far? Oh, um, uh, I'd say the number one that's ongoing right now is Dark Ages. I'd have to say, like, beyond, without a doubt, that's, like, probably my, my favorite title when it drops. It's just good read. The art in it is beyond fantastic. But um, uh, some other ones recently would be, like, uh, I'm trying to, uh, Alien has just uh, been getting, uh, Alien has actually surprised me overall all the way through. Not only has Disney and and uh, Marvel done a really good job taking a Fox property and, you know, because I thought it was going to be dumbed down. I thought it wasn't going to be bloody. And I mean, they, they have surprised me on all different fronts. And if this is any inclination of, of like an alien or xenomorph property that we might get in the future, I, I'm totally on board with that. It was, I'd have to say for 2021, a lot of people don't really talk about it, but the alien was from Marvel. Those first, like, I think it's five or I think it's five issues or six issues. So it's the first arc. But those first, that first arc was just, I mean, it was amazing. I, I really would, you know, I mean, if we got that for another movie, I'd be like, yeah, that would be good. Um, but even recently with a new arc, they are doing a really good job with a whole another story that's happening. So um, that's been another good one. I'm trying to think. Um, I have given Spider-Man a try, but right now it has been on that, that level mark. I'm not hating it or loving it. It's been right there in the middle. But some things related to Spider-Man recently were really good, like uh, the the whole Extreme Carnage, uh, you know, series that came out. That was really good. Um, the whole Sinister War, the four part, you know, kind of tied into the end of Spider-Man's arc. That was really well done. Um, and it kind of started off so-so. So, I mean, to finish off pretty strong was really nice. Um I'm trying to think. Oh, a lot of people, I don't hear a lot of people talk about this one. But um, Peach Famoko's Demon Days, man, I've really enjoyed like the three issues that she's given us so far. I have not read those at all. A lot of like, I, <laughs> uh, a lot of what I've read was like Black Widow, and, and that Black Widow um, has been good. And then I heard Black Cat's pretty pretty good. I know some other stories that get well praised, and they're ones that I've like i want to get involved in they just they're so far already i'll just wait until they're you know done before i do with savage avengers everybody talks about strange academy i know that's high up on like everybody's list um but i have recently picked up like i think the first three issues of black widow because that everybody really enjoyed that daredevil i think most people were liking that some of the main ones i mean i have been enjoying like the x-men's current title but all the other x-men uh, they they they're kind of doing this thing where like you have to be a pro kind of to read X Men like you have to know everything that's within the past history, and yeah. I mean that's that I mean as far as a fan I could see that as being phenomenal but somebody that's not current on X Men it's it's uh, uh, um no but Marvel's done some really good stuff man the 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 Hulk that the Immortal Hulk was really good and then in the first new issue we got of the new series was really good the new issue of Venom was really good with uh you know, Dylan uh, Brock as the new Venom, the Venom with the chains, because everybody likes chains, right? Kids like chains, and isn't, isn't that the same? <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a Spawn saying. But I have not read the new Venom yet, and that dude, like, would you have to like read the last issue of the of the Venom no. before that? No, and that's a one thing I can say that's 
some Marvel properties are doing a really good job at like where you could just pick it up and go. Like Venom number one, they did a really good job of like kind of tying you into what happened between the King and Black like series, how Venom, like about what Venom where he is, like who he is currently, and kind of how his son got his powers kind of thing. So they did a really good job of like kind of keep catching you up on current events. Some titles have been really good at that. Some other titles, they, they're kind of like expecting you to be a fan, you know, kind of thing. <clears throat> so it, you mentioned novels earlier that you also read, but you're also a manga fan. Like, I'm interested to hear what kind of mangas you've read. Um, uh, again, with horror, I kind of stick with horror, but that doesn't mean that's all I've read. But um, I name out some of my favorites. But uh, like originally, I'd have to say Macross was the first. Uh, like, I think I found Macross back in the day. And if you don't know what Macross is, it's like the beginning of Robotech. And Robotech eventually kind of ties into Gundam. Um, but uh, Macross was like the first one I found. And back in the day, it wasn't like translated in English. So that was back in the day where I was just coming up with my own stories and looking at the art. But I think ever since I found anime and manga, I've, fall, I've, I've been in love with it. Just that style and, and flow. Um <clears throat> but currently it'd be Demon Slayer and Black Clover and um, Goblin Slayer. It's a h high one on my list. Um, Rise of the Shield Hero. Uh, the time I got reincarnated to Slime. Um, trying to think. Um, some other big ones that are finished, but ones that I'm really big fans of, but uh, like Fairy Tale. I'm a big One Piece fan, but I'm, I'm not current on One Piece. I'm letting it kind of build up before I finish it. Um, so I'd say I'm like 75% through One Piece, but um, Inuasha, Yu uh, Yu Hakusho, man, I, I can go for days off anime and manga. Um, Cause I've done, I've done both. Some of my favorite ones I've read, like Death Note, I've, I've like read, watched the anime and seen the live action, you know. <laughs> so well, which one's better out of the three? Uh, the anime. Oh, no, I'd say the manga, and the manga is by far is, you know, the better property, but I'd say to anime, they did a really good job. Live action, stay away from that. Just, I mean, I had, mm -mm. <laughs> it wasn't good at all. Um, you said, you mentioned Inuyasha, and Inuyasha, I watched as, like, a 15-year-old. That's when I, I was coming out, I think. I was 15 years old. No, maybe even younger. Maybe 14. Still in junior high. But that came out as a manga first. Like, mangas are a different read. You read them backwards compared mm -hmm. to... See, that's what always threw me off. Now they made it easier where you pick up a manga and the second you start to read it the wrong way, it tells you, hey, you need to flip this, this book over and you need to read it, you know, and it even shows you diagrams on the back, like which way to read because it's opposite. You know, we read left to right and they read right to left and then... You know, same applies to the page. They read the right page to the left page instead of left to right. Um, but once you kind of get past that, it's not, I mean, the only other thing I'd say about manga, the drawback is it's black and white. For some reason, it's like half-half where people are into black and white and other people aren't. I, my only drawback to manga, like comparatively to the animes, I prefer the animes like usually better, but... Mangas are very loosely drawn, I'd say. They're, you can tell they are quickly you know, drawn, so there's some of the detail is lost in the quickness. But that's not to say that the art, the art that you get inside isn't good. It's just you can tell you know, that they were doing it in a hurry or you know, due to the small panels or maybe a deadline or something like that. So what kind of animes, like, you mentioned a few that you've watched that, like, just from the mangas, like, transferred over and watched the live action, but what kind of, like, animes were you into that you just found? Um, I, I could say, like, I found um, is a little different, because most of it's kind of like almost with comics, man. I, I know, like, upcoming, you know, animes and mangas that are dropping, depending on writers and stuff like that. But um, Elf and Lied, I'd have to say, is one that, like, you know, I, I found, but it was more like word of mouth. I'd never seen a preview of it or anything, and everybody was like, man, you got to watch this. Just, you know, watch the first episode. You're going to fall in love with it. But um, I could say they were right. Elf and Lied, and have you ever seen that? No, I have not. Ooh, Elf and Lied is a, it, it, I mean, it's a, it's horror action, but it, I mean, that first episode, it, it's, uh, 
hey, it'll paint a different picture by the time you get, you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, no, but there, there's been a whole bunch of uh, Magi is another like anime I kind of stumbled in upon and I fell in love with it. Um, and Magi, man, the way it's like pictured, it, it comes off like this family friendly, you know, adventure style, man, you know, anime until you get to like the middle part and it, it like touches base on some of the deepest, darkest, like, you know, stuff most humans don't ever come across. Um, and that's that's kind of like why I love a lot of you know, mangas and, and animes. They, they, for one, they can touch on topics that we're kind of scared to over here, you know, depression, suicide, you know, um, you know, the different isms out there, alcohol, alcoholism, you know, and drugs and whatnot. But even some of the ways they touch on it without being so blatantly obvious, they, they use art and metaphors and stuff like that, which is really well done, you know. Here and here, I'd say in the States, it's been more of like a PSA thing. Like, hey, kids, this is what your brain looks like on drugs, you know. Um, their, their kind of um, response to it was more like, hey, you know, like, a, you know, let's show them the bad version. But let's do it through, you know, amazing art and anime sequences kind of thing. So, I mean, it's kind of cool. So, moving on from anime, you're a huge movie and cartoon lover. Like, let's talk about some of the cartoons and movies you grew up with um i grew up with both man um uh, first off that's that's kind of like why we're touching base on all this man i just i love stories everything from campfire stories to scary stories you tell in the dark from novels to manga to comics to i mean anywhere the stories will be i will be there you will find me and and i just have always had a passion for stories that you know, and especially stories that have a beginning, middle, and end, I'm kind of drawn to, you know. Um, but, okay, so cartoons, you know, I grew up here in the States, and I mean, I was born 1980, I'm exactly 41, I'm about to be 42, but I mean, growing up in the 80s here was amazing, you know, we had like cartoon blocks every Saturday morning, every afternoon after, car you know, after school, we had the anime blocks, you know, and TV, and TV was a different time, you know. So, I mean, I grew up on Hanna-Barbera, Looney Tunes, Disney, you know, I mean, the first movie I saw in theaters was like, um, it was the re-release of Lady and the Tramp, you know, I think it was like its 25th or something anniversary, and I can remember being like, you know, maybe like two or three in the theater, like seeing that movie, but that was one of my first, you know, feature films, but you know, I mean, some of the other ones that at an early age that I can remember was were like DuckTales, the movie, you know, and, and uh, you know, a Robin Hood and, you know, uh, Sword in the Stone. We had and Black Cauldron, you know, some of the movies that a lot of people don't talk about. But, you know, that's that's like uh, when people talk about certain things like DC animated movies or like um, DCU in general TV shows. I, I've watched it all, seen it all. I watch, like as soon as they drop new stuff, I'm, I'm on it, you know. Like, um, <clears throat> but it's kind of the same thing with Marvel. Everything that Marvel draws, anything superheroes, I've always been a fan hugely of superheroes. Um, so back in the 80s, we had like a, a ton of like emergence of that. You know, we had He Man, we had G.I. Joe, we had like that mythological hero was big, you know, and it was, I mean, we got it in all forms from like every company from like Hanna Barbera all the way to Toho in Japan, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, you also was, like had Mighty Mouse. Yeah, Danger Mouse, bro. Like, uh, we had a, uh, like, uh, Mighty Max, man. We had a, uh, you know, there, I mean, I can name off cartoons that probably people forget about, you know, because they, first off, they were a big part of my life, and I grew up watching all of them. I mean, you're talking about the action blocks. But, I mean, we're talking about Thundercats and He Man and G.I. Joe. I had toys from all, I watched all the, you know, Transformers. And you go mask, you go brave star, you go like, uh, you know, I mean, I, um, let's see, let's see if I could think of some like weird, strange ones, like, uh, my, po my, my little monsters in my pocket, like my, my pet monster. Um, let's see a girl side. I had a sister, so I watched all that too, but you know, star bright, we had, uh, or no rainbow bright. We had, uh, my little pony. I watched that care bears. I was a big fan of care bears, but, um, I yeah I, I have to say like I was a huge fan of Care Bears as a kid like around that like four or five area range like I was a huge Care Bears like Care Bears stare 
<laughs> I remember like, you know, I want, and because I had a sister, it was like, I kind of used it as an excuse, but there was some stuff I was like into and it was supposed to be girly like she would, man, because it was like he man's cousin. I was like, yeah, I'll watch that. You know, it's not girly, you know, but I mean, it still kind of was, that was like, but I, I even watched other shows growing up, like, um, uh, like the ones I mentioned, but I mean, some other shows that had a mix of cartoons with Punky Brewster, you know, cause it had, it was like half cartoon, half live action. But um, there were some other shows that had a good mix of both, like Inspector Gadget, because you had like a Penny on there. Um, but I mean, I didn't really have an off switch to what I wouldn't watch. I mean, everything that's made it in cartoon form, you're talking about like people talk about Street Sharks and, and you know, uh, Bike of Mice from Mars and, and Battle Toads, man, I, I, Beetlejuice, Adam's Family, you know, I mean, like anything that popped up in cartoon form, I, I watched. And most, most, major movies that you can think of from the 80s and 90s i was a fan of back to the future video dudes edward says you know, i mean come on man i mean there was so many i can name off that made it to cartoon form you know that i was like yeah i'll watch that like if you haven't watched beetlejuice the cartoon man you're missing out that is a good cartoon not only that but it was pretty dark for back then you know it yeah was- it was it was pretty good like that's what i miss man i miss the the, the days where they like made a movie like the mask then they made the cartoon cartoon and, and then they like the whole ghostbusters the real ghostbusters came out in animation uh godzilla movie came out then godzilla cartoons came out and that men in black as well like all of these movies were freaking fa- or all these cartoons were fantastic man and and probably gave me the most nostalgia over the movies themselves was the cartoons it was kind of nice as growing up in a kid and you had that because it was like you got to see the movie and you could watch the cartoon and you could play with the toys or you could bust out the game. You know, you had you had ways you could relive these moments. And, and some of those things I feel is lacking today. You know, it's like it, it, some of those things that's missing. And I, you know, you kind of you feel bad for, you know, some of the, the current kids like, man, they don't have like a cartoon block or or like, you know, I mean, come on, even on the the the. Uh, the like really dumbed down side of it. You could say like, hey, we had Sesame Street and Mickey's Clubhouse and, you know, and stuff like that. We had like, you know, Reading Rainbow and, and, and you know, <clears throat> Mr. Rogers Neighborhood, you know, I mean, I, I can name off some kid shows, but for one, they don't come on TV. It's like all digital platform stuff. You catch it on, you know, rewind on the stream, you know, <laughs> I don't know, man. I kind of feel bad for these kids. They're, you know, it was like, waking up every Saturday at like five in the morning, five to like 12. And it was just nonstop, you know, stuff orientated to kids, like cartoons or, you know, maybe live action shows, you know, for kids or stuff like that, you know, Bill Nye, the science guy, you know, stuff like that. But it was, it was really a a cool thing growing up back then compared to, you know, what they, what they got now. Yeah. I I really liked, the older cartoons like hashtag bring back good cartoons like well they, they still make good cartoons though man they, they, you know that's like uh you know because i've been trying to get some people on some of the newer cartoons that's like man we got rick and morty come on man um well those are those are made for adults i mean like oh, that, actual that cartoons like made for ca- kids oh they got pj mass though pj mass no i'm playing like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> I don't. <know>. <laughs> <laughs> All my PJ Masks fans out there, no, I'm playing. <laughs> but uh, they do have like uh, I do like that close enough. It's on Netflix. Um, Hoops. Oh, yeah. Hoops is mm-hmm. a pretty good one. Uh, Solar Opposites. Oh, I love Solar Opposites. Um, Primal. Did you watch that on HBO? Primal yeah. is good. It's, it's uh, done by. Wendy Travalski. It's the same people who did uh, Dexter's Laboratory and Powerpuff Girls and Samurai Jack. Oh, and that'd be it's, sick it's, then. Kind of reminds me of Barbaric. It's like a caveman and a and a raptor. They like team up in dinosaur time, you know, like BC times, and they have to like work together to make it through this. Uh, it's, it's pretty dope. It's only like, I think it's only like six episodes, and there's no talking because it's supposed to be like a, Neth- a Neanderthal and like a, a raptors so it's, so it's, it's silent m- episodes mm-hmm. it's That's pretty much like a dope, a dope soundtrack with like sound effects you know it's like i mean because i think the neanderthal i think he does grunt and stuff like that he's like rrr, rrr, you know but um pretty much there's no there's no dialogue but it's it's really good 
Bengals you, said a, you, you said a raptor though, right? Like that's mm-hmm. old me. That that's my so, favorite. Yeah. That, that's my favorite dinosaur. No, nah, but there's been some. Um, I mean, there's been some, especially like animated movies, and most people have known the big ones. But you have Adam's Family and Hotel Transylvania, and but that's like me. I mean, that that never stopped. I think since I was like being a fan of you know cartoons growing up, that that side of me never shut off. Like I still watch cartoons. You know, I mean, like um, I'm not so much into a lot of the, the the kids cartoons that they've been dropping for kids. Like they just dropped a new animated He Man one. And then not the Kevin Smith one. There's like a another yeah. human. Have you seen that? That I mean, oh my god! I, I, um, um, okay, I I actually did like it, but I like I liked it for a whole different reason. Like it was more of the fact that like it was a good story, but I'm like, this is not He Man. Like they can change everybody's name and and, it, and make it and just call it something different and it'd still be good in, in my eyes right. but it's definitely not he-man and for anybody that bitched and complained about the kevin smith one go watch that one yeah because that one's <laughs> epic man uh I, I've, I've finished part two and you know, i mean i lo- i like the first part i was you know I've, I've been a kevin smith fan and i've been a he-man fan and i watched the first part i even did a review on it and i mean I can say there were parts of it I didn't like, but I wasn't all butthurt like everybody else was. And I can see their part of it and why they were. But seeing part two now, and I'm like, come on, guys. Like, uh, how could y'all judge so quickly? Yeah, if they would have just left it all, like, did it all at once. People would yeah, it would have been a different story. And yeah. I think they, I think they broke it up on purpose because like <laughs> uh, how divided the community was on this. And it's funny because I've seen people that hated the first part, and now they're like, "Man, the second part was amazing." And like, uh, and now, now that they're dropping that other He Man thing, people are starting to be like, uh, "We kind of want Kevin Smith back," you know. <laughs> and and um, at this, at, at this point, people have already seen it and stuff, so you could just say like. They're gonna make wicked toy sales from like the Skeletor like He Man type thing, like when he has the power. Um, uh, Evil Lynn. Yeah, Could you yeah, imagine that as powerful, a, as one like she's just buff and that that yeah. was sick. And then when yeah, she's like of- actually the. Um, Sorcerer Supreme. The Sorcerer Supreme, yeah, with her like bat costume and stuff. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, even the toys we got already, they, I mean, I watched a whole bunch of reviews on them and they looked, I mean, they looked amazing in person, but like, I mean, they were, they were, you know, decently made toys and it looked pretty epic and stuff. Seeing that Skeletor God one, man, that that was, he was, he was pretty good looking. Yeah, I I really, I, I kind of like, almost thinking of like trying to figure out a ways to get like most of these figures. Like I want at least the He-Man and the, what he becomes, man, that, that savage He-Man, that was just craziness. And I want that figure as well. Like I'm going to be tracking these down and, and trying to get them. Bro, that part of the show had me on the edge of my seat, man. I was like kind of scared for, for you know, Tila and stuff when they were teleporting and stuff. And he was just Hulk raging out. At first, I was like, man, it's just a copy of like the Hulk. And, but once he got going, I was like, oh, God, this guy, you know, <laughs> like, uh, no, it was, it was really, t- I mean, it was done really well. It was tense. It was action packed. It was nice. I mean, I enjoyed every cliffhanger from every episode. He did a real good job of like, you know, ending each episode and, wanting you to come back more like oh man i gotta stop this episode and you know you couldn't you know <laughs> yeah you just had to keep going it's like are you still watching you know i am oh you know i am stop that that's awesome like I, yeah i know flash by night terrence uh tj liked uh like uh he meant masters of the universe revelations as well so it, it did but like i remember seeing the cover too for the fourth issue and seeing how Tila was getting crowned with the Sorcerer Supreme, like she became mm-hmm. uh, something we did, like it kind of makes sense now as the comic went on. Mm-hmm. Well, the comic was done nicely. I mean, I, I, I made it to the, I think just the third issue. I have all like the first three. But I, I mean, for me, and I wasn't like, I've never read like, like He Man, the comic in its entirety. I think I picked up issues here and there. So I'm not like well versed like Moto, you know, 
expert supreme but as far as what they showed us in the comics and stuff i kind of enjoyed it you know like i never knew an origin you know on skeletor and me as a fan of skeletor i was always like well what the heck is he you know like is he just a skeleton you know um so it was kind of nice to get some like and, and i know like after it came out it was like a different version that the comics had already given us or something like that but i mean for me, at first time reading, it wasn't a bad origin. You know, it was kind of cool, like the way they set it up and everything. I thought the comic went really well with the uh, with the series. You know, it was kind of like background. You know, like it kind of added to it. Right on, and, and like what are like I'm gonna say this. I know we were talking about TV cartoons for kids earlier, but like the cartoons from like that come out from like Pixar and stuff like that. Like uh, I've been watching those. Like I remember, I know sing sing Two is supposed to be coming out and I'm actually super pumped for that. For that. How about you? I am. I love the first one. Anything like I'm a big music fan. So like, and you know, like anything animated, they do well with music. I'm a big fan of it. Like I, that's one of the reasons I've always, like, I'm a, I am a big Disney fan. I've seen every single Disney movie, the second it drops, and I mean, I think there's only been one movie in Disney's history, as far as I'm concerned, that I was disappointed with. Everything else has been either really good or extra, extra good, you know. Um, no, but I've always loved that, how they've still added music into their movies, even though it might be awkward nowadays, but like, like seeing, like, that whole movie was done really well, just like the uh, surrounding the competition, like even the... the you know the whole backstory with uh, the gorilla and the and the criminal element and, and everything, um, but it was kind of funny if you watch them the beginning of it. They're all like bad. They're all like you know one way or another. They're like you know the the koala is trying to scam some people. The the little mouse is like a like <laughs> taking out debts, you know and. <laughs> Um, no, but seeing was the first one was just uh, all the songs, like the different renditions, like Billy Joel and and stuff like that, was done really well. So I'm looking forward to the second one. I have not seen it yet, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm super pumped for that. I was just like seeing something. I was like, oh man, there's a sing too. Damn right. It's like I'm pumped for that. Like Record Ralph too. Record Ralph was amazing. Whenever it first Ralph, came I like both of them. Um, I, I like anything with Easter eggs, man. I'm a big fan of like Ready Player One, Wreck It Ralph, anything that does like homages to the originality of where it came from or whatever. I love that. So, Wreck It Ralph was definitely high on my list. Getting to see that scene with Zangief and all the other villains, and <laughs> I'm not the bad guy, you know. No, um, no Wreck It Ralph and Part Two was both, both of them really good. Um, isn't there okay, Ready Player One? Um, there's supposed to be a second one coming out, isn't there? Ready Player Two. Yeah, there's. He already wrote the book, and it's already been released. But I, like, as far as I know, they're in post production of the movie. Like, they haven't started, or like, I think they have the cast set up. But as far as like, I think they're just continuing a lot of cast from the first one. But that one, I know a little bit. And he's doing his second book. The second book is Armada, and Armada is um, it's kind of like a very close version of The Last Starfighter, if you've ever seen that 80s movie. Um, The Last Starfighter was about a boy that was playing an arcade game, kind of like Gallagher, like choo-choo-choo and shoot ships and stuff. And um, in in the game, like, the game wasn't really an arcade game. It was like a, a testing module that, like, some aliens sent to Earth to test and find, like, our best fighter pilots or something like that. So this kid ends up getting the high score and he ends up like being sucked into this like huge intergalactic like alien space war or whatever. That that was the last Starfighter, the movie from the 80s. But the, uh, you know, Ernest Klein's his movie Armada, it's kind of modeled the same way. It's about like a kid that gets sucked into like an intergalactic war and it's just based off of his like video game scores or whatever and, and he becomes like the leader of like a certain you know the good side of the the battle but i think that's his next movie is the one the one and then he's going to do ready player two i look forward to it. like is there any any set release date on on that or production no, I think um, right now, I think uh, Armada is set to come out like 2022, but it already got pushed back like twice, I think, because, you know, current situations, I think. 
Is there any other animated movies that you enjoyed? I'm I'm trying I'm trying to think of some of them that I really really enjoyed watching. Besides like Wreck It Ralph and Ready Player One was kind of live action animated. Mm -hmm. So animated movie. I mean, I recently I saw Adam's Family two, and like right before that, I had watched the first one. I really liked the first one, so I was hopeful on the second one. But the second one, it was a good movie. It just wasn't as funny. It didn't have the same energy as the first one. Um, I actually like, have I, not watched that at all, like either one of them. The first one is really good. It really surprised me. That's why I, I was kind of off put by the animation. After like seeing the previews and the way it looked, I was like, man, that's not my Adam's family. But um, like I kind of broke down. I was like bored one day and I watched the movie with like my best friend and we watched it and both of us, I mean, we laughed our ass. I mean, it's, it, you talk about like a stoner film, it's it's 100% like a, like a, you know, that kind of comedy. And it's it's really, the way they set it up and did it was really fun and interesting. And it fit the whole Adam's Family motif. The second one, I think it was more oriented towards kids. Like I said, it wasn't a bad movie. It's a good movie. It's just they lost a, a lot of that, like, kind of hidden adult humor that was in the first one, and that, that kind of thing. Um, but some, I mean, I mean, animated movies, I, I can name off, like, I mean, like, um, and not even talking about, like, uh, just regular animated, but, like, when goes, like, Studio Ghibli, you know, because I enjoy a lot of those, but, like, you know, Spirited Away, Ponyo, um, Princess Monioko, Howl's Moving Castle, and then I've watched a lot of the other ones, like Tales from Mercy, um, I, anything Studio Ghibli I watched, like, Up on Poppy Hill, like, um, but... Um, you know, some other big ones like Finding Neverland. Uh, that was a big one for everybody. Um, but um, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to think more Americanized animated movies. I mean, you got like, I mean, recently you can say the Hotel Transylvania. And I saw the, the fourth one. And that was pretty good. There's um, a fourth one? Yeah, the one where they, they uh, drag becomes human. Oh, know, yeah, yeah. I know that one. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the, the, I, I've liked all of those. You know, first off, I, I do like Adam Sandler and his whole crew. Uh, I've enjoyed all his movies, serious and his comedy. Um, so Hotel Transylvania was like a win-win because I already liked the a animator because it's the same guy who did like Samurai Jack and Powerpuff Girls. And um, so, and then having Adam Sandler behind it and everything was kind of, I mean, so I've enjoyed all those with Minions and Despicable Me, Megamind, um, Megamon was crazy. Um, but Despicable Me, one, two, and three. I really like the third one the best, but it's more because they have more 80s jokes in it. I, I really um, liked uh, the Monsters vs. Aliens. Oh, it was good. Yeah, I like that one. Um, and see, that's like like animated movies and stuff. I don't think there's, there's too many that I haven't seen. That's like watching a movie with me or a TV show. It's kind of like, <laughs> hey, you know, if you ask me to pick that, like that, I, I usually try and find stuff that people haven't watched. But me, I watch so much, you know, because um, I, I enjoy all of it. <clears throat> yeah, I, I do too. Like, you find something, you really latch onto it and just like binge it. Or if it's a movie and that you. You, you do love it because, like, Rick, when Rick and Ralph came out, I was like, damn, right? I'm going to the theaters to watch that. Like, there's there's no way I'm not. And um, I, I'm trying to think of, like, tons of tons of movies. But, like, through laid off things from childhood, like, Detective Pikachu, that was – it's not an animated movie, but that was pretty damn good for what they was, did with it. I'm a big Pokemon fan. I know you're a big Digimon fan, but I'm a big uh, Pokemon fan. I always have been since it started. I used to get ridiculed because I was like that 18-year-old that was into Pokemon. Um, but like um, as the years go, and I've been wanting a live-action Pokemon for years. So for that being the first live-action movie that we got, I, I'm satisfied with it. It was good. It was funny. It wasn't exactly, you know, I would prefer like more of like an Ash Ketchum type of journey you know, something like that. And it doesn't necessarily have to be Ash or Team Rocket or nothing like that. They could easily, you know, make a brand new character. It's like Red and Blue. Um, but, um, no, for first movie, I thought it was really done well. You know, I mean, what they did show us, like how the Pokemon looked, acted, that kind of stuff was really, and the main story was pretty dope too. And if they continue with that story, like just think about this. They built the world. The world is set mm -hmm. now. Let's say that Ash does live in that world. We just got like shown like a portion of 
this world because they did show like this world has like the battle part of it and stuff, but this is just a different area. Mm-hmm. So like Ash they, could be there, they, Gary could they be did there. Talk about that the trainers are out there and they're catching stuff. It just wasn't that part of this movie, but they did like there's a whole bunch of Easter eggs that show like the trainers are out there. They had Pokeballs for sale. We saw Poke Centers, you know, I mean all the all like you said, the world they built it. They just gotta follow through with it. And as far as I know, we're getting two more. Like we're supposed to be getting another Pokemon detect, like a Pikachu, um, Detective Pikachu, and then we're supposed to get a full fledged like just Pokemon movie that's untitled right now. That's amazing. So everybody look forward to that because I am Pokemon I mean, fans rejoice. Hell yeah! And then and then on top of that, there's some other like big properties that we're getting first off. We're getting uh, Nintendo's finally branching out and doing their animated and live action movies. So the first one we're getting Super Mario Brothers, which I'm pretty excited for that. I've been mean, what, what is it like thirty years, you know, something like. That. Um, but um, you know, on the other end, we're getting like DC's dropping some of their animated movies. We're getting that DC, you know, Super Pets movie. I know Marvel. We're getting like I think three or four from them because we're getting like the Marvel Zombies movie. We're getting like the second, you know, um, the second season of What If. Uh, I know we're supposed to be getting like a Howard the Duck. Uh, like specific show and then and I want to say that's going to be like you know their raunchier comedy kind of adult style animation type thing so I'm kind of looking forward to that but we got some hopeful things coming around the future yeah I am Groot you can say like he is kind of CGI so like you you get mostly that would be kind of animated I guess I don't don't know if they showed us any of like how it's going to be done because it might be all done in CGI or just computer you know it could be like computer animated or something like that where it's not like full-fledged animated but maybe like cgi mixed with animation or something like that kind of like what they did with uh what if because mm-hmm. what if i think they use like three different i think it was like shade cell with like digital and printing and then the digital animation behind it i think is what they did it still looked good though so what would you have what would you say like your favorite like uh out of the shows that we got, like we got the WandaVision, we got uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, we got Loki, we got What If, like what, are, what is your favorite? Like I know Hawkeye just dropped, we, we'll leave Hawkeye out of it just because it... I haven't, be- I haven't watched the first two episodes, so I can't talk about okay, it, then- I, have, I, I have heard high things so far about Hawkeye. I've even had, you know, well, I've just heard high praise, let's just say that. But, okay, we'll just so, talk with the the ones that were completely finished as a complete mm-hmm. series. So I have watched every single Marvel show, like you know, starting off with the WandaVision, leading up to Hulk, and you know, I mean, uh, Hulk, um, Winter Soldier, and Falcon, and then Loki, and What If, and um, my honest opinion would probably be Loki. I really liked What If. Like once you get you know watching What If single issues, um, they were good, but they. For one, it's not what I wanted. Two, it's not kind of like the direction that I felt like I wanted them to go. But when you watch it all the way as a whole, it was amazing. Like it all made sense. Like everything kind of fit. Like the grand scheme of things was pretty epic. So I like that. But as far as like what you got episode to episode, like the mysteries that were going on, you know, the actual like acting that went into the show, all the Easter eggs that went into it, it had to be looking. To me, it was like the most interesting. It had me the hope most hyped when we got, you know, at the at the very end, and we got to see spoiler alert when we got to see um, Crank, you know, Kang, or or you know, whatever he was titled. But um, that for me, that was pretty uh, major. Actually, seeing him on screen because we already knew he was playing Kang, but just seeing him in that that role and and the way he talked and everything, you know, I think his name is Jonathan Majors, but I was like, yeah. You know, I mean, I, I literally, there was one of those moments like at the end with, you know, when Captain America was uh, like, you know, Avengers, you know, hey, and he, you know, it was kind of like one of those moments where I stood up and I was like, oh, yeah, you know, this is my boy Kang, it's you know. A, yeah. Kang on the toilet, you know. I mean, yeah, uh, Kang no. on the toilet, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'd have to say I've, I've enjoyed all of them. And my least favorite, I'm going to have to go with Wanda, WandaVision and... The only reason why I really liked WandaVision and I thought they, you know, the, the overall show was okay, 
The problem is, in my opinion, they dropped the ball. Like that could have been the moment they they brought in the X Men. Like if they would have gone through with what they gave us with Quicksilver, and it wasn't just some weird like you know like massive magic or whatever. That could have been them explaining like the, how the Fox you know X Men merged in, and it didn't have to be like a full fledged like come on in guys. You know, no, it could have been that slow tease that hey they were coming, but I feel like they. You know, because they switched it at the last second, they kind of, you know, dropped the ball. But another thing is, like, you know, they did reveal about the dark hold and everything. But man, it wouldn't have been so much more epic to see another big bad, you know, just take one step foot into the universe. You know, whether it was Mephisto or Nightmare, or you know, even if it was a big bad Super Skull, it would have been dope. You know, to actually get yeah. like another. And, another and they're not, presence. they're not going to be going in like they are kind of doing a second season, considering that. I, I don't know, like, that whole Agatha series, it's either going to go tie in directly right after WandaVision, or it's going to be, like, a, a whole different series. But like we are going to get the Fantastic Four. Yeah, I mean, that's the end of this phase, and they promised it. I mean, the Fantastic Four is coming. It's a matter of, like, who we're getting along the way, I think, at this point. You know, it's like, who's going to pop? Because, I mean... Oh, we do know they're doing the new Avengers. We, I mean, they've, they've set up that pretty well. We do know that, like, everybody's hinting that they might do, like, West Coast Avengers. So it's like, who do they bring into that side? And they've kind of been hinting at who they're going to do. But I kind of like the other side of it, that they're finally doing, like, the monster, you know, universe with Blade and the Midnight Suns and Ghost Rider and that side of it. I'm just, like, that's the side of Marvel I'm kind of hyped up for is the direction that the dark holds going. Cause I think the next time we're going to get to see it is in the second Dr. Strange movie after, you know, the events of this upcoming Spider-Man. But I mean, as far as what they're going to do with the dark hold and who's coming after it kind of thing. I mean, it, it could be anybody. It could be Dormammu since they've already used them. It could be Mephisto and nightmare, like everybody thinks, or it could be, it could be Helena again. We don't know. No. And I haven't seen the Eternals yet, but there is an end credit scene that reveals a character's voice. I'm not gonna say which one since like you haven't seen it, but have you watched Shang Chi yet? No, I'm actually behind. The last, the current one I've seen movie wise is um, Black Widow. I have not seen Shang Chi. I've not seen Venom Two, and I've not seen the Eternals. Now, I do know who it is and, and the scene. I've already seen the scene. I'm, I'm not bothered by spoilers whatsoever. So, like, you know, the events at, at, at the end of Venom 2, I know that scene already. You know, I know. Because um, to me, the way I see it, I still haven't seen the whole movie. So it doesn't really, like, spoil, you know, anything pertaining to the main plot. It's just kind of like where the direction of the movies are going after it. So, like, knowing that person, that, that voice that we're supposed to hear, and, yeah, that got me, like, super excited. Because we already knew he was coming. He's already been cast. Yeah. Um, but, uh, no, that had me excited that we're finally getting to see, you know, that, that he is. It's not just, like, a, a myth that Marvel has given us. It is, you know, coming to fruition kind of thing. And, I mean, and he's about, coming soon. Yeah, it's about In other time, words, right? like, that, like that, that, that was more of the question everybody was having. Like, what, where is he coming? What? Where is he going to tie into and stuff? And now we've actually gotten him somewhat into the story. Yeah. Um, they did tell us that, like, most of the MonsterVerse is going to happen, like, next Halloween. And we're going to get that, like, because I think they're doing two things. They're doing, like, Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas. And they're doing, like, a Halloween, like, monster mashup. And I think, and don't quote me, people, but I think that's when we're going to get to see, like, Werewolf by Night for the first time. It's going to be in that, like you know, Disney Plus Monster Mash, like, you know, the holiday bash or whatever they're calling it. But I think we're, that's when, I think we're going to get to see bits and pieces before then. But I think in that episode, that's going to be like, hey, this is the team and this is where they're going. And then after that, we might see a couple big movies tied into that franchise, you know, and I think that's where they're going with that side of it. <clears throat> right on. I'm well, excited, man. I am super pumped for everything like MCU. I'm super pumped for everything DCU animated has to coming as well because their part two of um, Long Halloween is going to drop here soon, I think. It dropped over here. Oh, did it? I got to go yeah, look for that now. Like, may, like maybe, I want to say a month ago. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to. The they dropped for that. recently. They dropped that, and they dropped uh, Injustice, and both of them were really good. The, the ending to uh, Halloween Part Two, with no spoilers, it was it was good. But um, I want to say they did 
kind of alter the, the ending a little bit, but they've kind of done that on, you know, like the killing joke and some of the other recent, like, um, you know, the story, the story based animated ones they've done. I watched injustice. I enjoyed that one. Justice is dope. I thought they did a good job. Um, I can't remember. They, uh, they've already named like the next two that are coming out. I can't remember what they are. I'm drawing a blank. But I, I do know that I think one of them's Catwoman. I think one of them's like a Catwoman based uh, animated movie that we're getting next, but I can't remember. That'd be decent. Hmm. Well, Mike, we're at the hour mark. I just want to say thank you for joining me on this amazing day. And that, and guys, it's not ending here. Whiplash Wednesday is continuing. Nick Comic Culture dropping a second video, overcompensating for something as usual. But guys, after him is Brandon and Missing Link, chopping it up about who knows? It's Crisis on Infinite Rants. Check it out. Check what they have to say because they're both hugely knowledgeable of comics. And then Big Herm Collectibles. He's dropping his haul video. See what he picked up. Join him on his fun live stream because it's always fun with Big Her. Then ending the night in fashion is tomorrow cinema. Station Manny. He's ending it. Is it what are you reading? What are you geeking out about? Or will we have another creator interview? Or will it be a backlog bros back chat? Tune in and find out. So Mike. The link is down below to your channel, as well as Spine Ticks and Comic Talk Weekly, Phil's channel, because you, you're always on either one of their channels. And that, what books are you reading that you recommend people that are watching right now? Um, Sweet Paprika, Vinyl, um, Red Sonia by Mirka Adolfo, um, Harley Quinn's main series, DC Comics, Robin, uh, Batman's main series, it's about to start a brand new arc for people that want to hop on. Um, yeah, some good, good stuff right there. Friggin' rights, man. And you do reviews. You drop quite a bit of reviews every week. Mm -hmm. uh, anywhere between 25 to 40 titles a week. It just depends. And I'm a little behind right now, but... But um, somewhere around that mountain, I try to, everything I pick up or read, I, I review. So, I mean, just depends on what comes out that week. Right on, man. Well, I want to say thank you again for joining me. Guys, go sub up to him. Go sub up to Spine Takes. Go sub up to Comic Talk Weekly. That's Phil. Man, you guys are awesome. Every one of you guys over in Spine Takes. And you guys just have a great old time over there, don't you? Oh, yeah, it's a great hangout place. You know, come hang out with us. We're usually there between five to ten hours. You know, you never know how long it's going to go. You might start with us in the nighttime and end up, you know, <laughs> going to sleep. And we're still on, you know, greeting you. Hello. Yeah. I just want to, like, you said Roscoe was on my show a while ago. Dave Clex is going to come on here very very soon i'm gonna have every one of you guys eventually coming on because i love you guys dave collects real rude roscoe you phil uh sith of course can't I forget about sith yeah. man. i mean we love the bad bad yeah you know, man. It's, good. it's good when you have you know multiple groups get together and there's no you know there's nothing crossing the lines you know it's nice it's just a, you know hang out and talk and we all it's have like get off my turf Right? You, <laughs> man, you stepped over that, that little line right there. You know, you better watch out. Mm. Yeah, man. Yeah, no, I put the links down below. And guys, hit that like button if you like what you've been watching. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And ding, 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 that notification bell, just like my brother Big Herm likes to say for future videos. Guys, thank you so much. Station, hashtag stay nerdy, my friends.